everyone, Argsy here. Welcome along to our guide on using Courseplay. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at setting up multiple tools on a course to all work in the same field at the same time. Now, this applies to any sort of tool, whether it's a bean harvester, like what we have sitting here, could be a combine, a cultivator, a cedar, um, you name it, just about anything goes. So uh, yeah, it works the same so long as the piece of equipment you're using is the same width. So for example, you could run three different, completely different types of cultivators, so long as they're all the same width. Let's say three meters, because that seems to be quite a common width, um, but they don't need to be all the same. Same for cedars, you could run three six meter cedars. They don't all have to be the same color or the same brand, just as long as they're putting the same crop in the ground. But for our example, we're gonna jump in and we're gonna harvest these green beans. So. Let's not talk about it, let's jump up in the cab and have a crack at it. Now, before we do, of course, reminder, Courseplay is available through GitHub at the moment. It is a developer version. We are using version 8.0.0.4 at the time of recording. So uh, no doubt there will be updates coming through thick and fast. They already have since Courseplay was first released. So do make sure that you're using the current version and the most latest and greatest version of Courseplay when you're doing this. I don't expect a whole heap to change for some of these things. Um, it's been the way that Courseplay has been used and set up for a long time. So um, other than new features being added in, which we'll cover as they come, I don't see a whole lot changing. But anyhow, let's uh, carry on. Let's jump into a harvester and get this course set up and running. All right, now, first things first, we'll press our delete and we're going to bring up our course play window here so we can see that uh, automatically detected the working width of the implement uh, three meters wide there for the harvesters. Now we're gonna jump in here and create ourselves a course. So as we've shown before, you can click on field position and tag that field and that is where we are going to be working. Now, for our field work settings here, now obviously the first thing we need to change, we've got our working width defined, we need to go through and have multiple tools and select it. Now, we're gonna cover off some of these things. Switching lanes is a very difficult one to explain uh, verbally. So there's a couple of great visual images which Courseplay have provided, which I'll just throw up on the screen there, which kind of demonstrate how lane switching is working. Um, not something I would use for a harvester. There is reasons you might want to, but there is also a risk, as Courseplay say in their menu, that uh, equipment is more likely to collide. So just bear that in mind when you're using switching lanes. Um, like I said, I normally leave it deactivated. That's entirely up to you. Now, number of headlands. Uh, different to previous courses, uh, when we're running a course for a single piece of equipment, the headland width is defined by that one piece of equipment. Now, this is the number of headlands each harvester each tool will run. So with three harvesters in here, uh, nine meters combined header width, if we take off one headland, we'd take off nine meters. So two headlands is what we're gonna go through and set up here. Uh, we're not in a narrow field, we don't have to worry about that. We are going to start work on our headland because we're harvesting, we need to take the crop out before we can get into the middle. Um, sharp headland corners, we've looked and talked about that before. I'm going to have no rounded corners. Uh, we'll make it a little bit slower and more laborious in the corners, but we're just gonna have that set up there. Now, the next most important setting comes down here when we're looking at the center. Uh, I'm going to set this up, and there's a reason I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna set this up again on lands, and I'm just gonna bump the number of rows up to eight. And there's a reason I'll do that, and we'll get to that in just a little bit later. Um, because what I'm gonna explain is a alternative way to use multiple tools in a harvest setting, or it could be in any, any setting and why lands is useful before being able to do that. Um, otherwise, I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. One thing we haven't touched on yet is direction of rows. I've always left that at automatic, um, and we might look at that in a more specific detail at another stage. We don't have any islands to worry about or anything like that. So if we jump back into our map and have a look here, we're gonna go through and generate our field work course. All right, so there we go. There is our course all created. Now, you can see there our lines as we go around the headlands, uh, where those are working. Basically, that line there defines all three harvesters. So we'll have one that follows the center of the line, one that follows on the left, and one that runs on the right-hand side of the line. Uh, likewise, in there for our land. So we do actually end up, because of the way this works, we've got quite a bit of a gap here. I'm interested to see if that's actually gonna fill in. I get the feeling that might not work. So I'm just gonna jump back through here we're just going to bump these rows back down to eight and just try and get, generate our course again and see if that changes anything. And there we go. No, still no change. So I'm, I'm curious as to see whether this is going to pick up the whole field because I'm wondering why we're getting these close overlaps here and here. Um, the other way to set that, not one setting I haven't used, is to activate the even row width. And that could go through and correct that. 
No, it still doesn't look to have corrected it. Well, let's just roll with it and see what happens if we press play and go with these. So we've got the course all set up and you'll see we've now got an option here for left, center or right. And that defines which harvester we're going to be running. Being the first harvester, we want this to be the left hand one. But before we go any further, we actually need to go through and either save our course uh, or we can copy it. So at the moment, it is only a temporary course. We do have the option down here, this little clipboard to copy the course. So we've actually copied that course and uh, it's now sitting basically in a clipboard where it can be shared between the other harvesters. So we were to tab through to the next one for example we can go through here and you can see this is green we can go through and grab that and it is now going to be all set up you can see the icon out there all set up there on the same course but let's not do it that way let's go and also have a look at how you can save a course and load it in for each of these pieces of equipment uh, why well, you might want to do that well let's say we own this field which we do let's say we're going to be running green beans in this every single season why go through and create the course every single time why not save it and use it over and over and over again the other reason it can be helpful is if you're running a combine and you want to bale the straw behind it you can actually save the course and load it into your baler and uh, run it that way so let's have a look about saving the course so back here in the helper settings page you can see our course is all set up there we're going to go to this tab here on the left and this is our course manager basically where we can save our courses at the moment you can see we've got a temporary course through there what we're going to do is come down here and we're going to create a new folder now i like to name the folders based on the field we're working in so this is field 38 makes it easy to find things in the future now we're going to click on the save course option down here click on field 38 save course so we have to make sure we select the folder first and we're going to call this three times bean harvesters or we could call it the three times bp2140e if you want to get technical and name it using the correct term but we go actually spelt it wrong as well and i think there is an option you can't change it can't edit it or anything like that we can rename the entry so come through here we can actually go through and correct that little typo um, we just had to change our mode so we've gone to okay um, if we've renamed the entry we can delete the entry we can move the entries put it in a different folder going to go and change mode again so we've got that course all saved in there we exit back out you can see this is now called three times beam harvesters um, if we go back into here what we can do we can clear the current course we're going to load the course if we click on the course we can then go through and load it and if we come back out now we've got three times beam harvesters on the first of the combines or well, we're actually in the middle one so jump out to this one Come back in here and we're going to go through and do exactly the same thing so clear the course come through and poke on the course go onto there click on the bean harvesters make sure it's green load the course for that one that's got that in there tab through that one's got three times bean harvesters then we're going to go through and do exactly the same on the last one here as well so we should all have all three now running on the same course so back here in the first harvester we've got the course set up on all of them now we want to have a look here we want to be set on left we've got center and right uh, so we're going to be here on the left of the first one now i did have an issue the first time i pressed play it opened up the bunker and wouldn't drive it was like it had the auger open and for whatever reason i could not get it to go um i had a bit of a play around came back saved the game exited out and when i've come back in it actually worked out all right so we, we press a start here uh, we want to go to first waypoint of course and left that's going to go and everything's going to unfold it's basically going to get ready to harvest so uh it should spin around get lined up but at this stage last time it was actually opening up and trying to unload so i don't know why that would have been but here we go it's going to get to the start point waypoint number one as we can see bring up the rest of them and it's heading off here on a left hand course and going to start harvesting some beans so with that one underway let's grab the second one get that set up on center and put the third one on the right and as you can see there 46 minutes to harvest this field of course if we were doing it singularly um, it would be three times that amount of time but that doesn't take into account any downtime with uh, unloading or anything like that either so um, it is just purely 46 minutes of the harvester running at this speed around the course anyhow let's go and get these other two set up and running as well turn that one on to center and once again just press play and it should run off and go and get started up if we tap across to the next one we're going to press right hand side for that and we'll press play as well now one of the settings actually we haven't looked at and i'm just going to tab into or jump into the settings options here 
So under the vehicle settings here, if we scroll down, there's actually a convoy distance and you can set the value as to how much space you might have between vehicles. So at the moment it defaults to 75, which is uh, pretty high. The last is 40. Um, we're just going to bring it down. Well, we might bring it back down to 40 meters. Seems like a reasonable, um, reasonable distance. So we'll just get that one. So as you can see, the first or oh, the second harvester there is actually waited until it was um, 75 meters behind the lead one. So once again, go into the settings. We can have a look at that same setting here under this one. And it is set so it's specifically for the vehicle. It will always be that distance behind. We'll bring that one down to 40 as well, and it should be up and going. And I'm assuming I didn't have that one set to first waypoint, so we'll go and fix that so it can get going in the right position. Absolutely had it set to nearest waypoint, that's a rookie mistake. Anyhow, we'll press first waypoint and it will get to the right place and go and start once the other harvesters got far enough away. So there we go, all three harvesters now up and running. So the lead one well and truly down the far side there. The second one turning the corner and we're up and underway here in the third one. Now that we've got that course set up and running off the first waypoint correctly. So uh, there we go, that's all up and running. That's um, pretty much all there is to setting up multiple tools. Now I'm just going to let them finish the headlands and then I'm going to have a quick little... Uh, look at another way that you can run multiple tools it's not strictly a multi-tool course it does just use a single course but it's kind of one way i've done fields previously um, and something you could consider doing too in the future so we'll let these headlands get opened up and then we'll take a look at that So the first harvester here has finished the headlands and actually just as I was looking at the course I opened this up and when all three are running it actually shows all three courses and you can see all of those uh, passes that will be done across the field so it does look like the entire field would be cleared even though it did look like it was going to miss some in the initial field work settings that it had so um, that is good to know. Now I'm actually going to stop them running here on the headlands uh, I obviously have confidence that the land system will carry on and they will get the field finished but we're going to try something just a little bit different to try and give you another way that you could run multiple tools in a course play. So for this to work we're actually going to run a single course so if we go into our course settings we've already cleared the previous course under our field work settings I'm going to change this to a single tool and we're going to do six headland passes obviously the uh, combined three doing two headlands with six passes so that is our headlands done. Uh, we're going to start work on centre and I'm actually going to set this up as lands. I've done it to eight rows. I don't know whether that's going to be the optimum. Um, a few more might actually be the best when I was looking at the map previously. You can see how many passes there were over there. Eight times three is 24. I'd say there's probably a few more, but we're going to try eight and see how that works out. So let's generate the fieldwork course. Have a look to see what comes up here. So it's pretty confusing because we do have the same course on three different pieces of equipment um, all overlaid. So let's um, just jump out. We'll clear the courses in the other two and have a look at it. All right, and that looks a whole lot better. Now you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. It's broken this into six lands of eight each. So I could actually bump that up to 16, which I will try and do. So just go down to our rows per land, see if we can get up to 16, we can. Generate a field work course with that. Because what I'm wanting to do is basically create one, two, three, exactly what we've done there. Three different sections. Now, I'm going to head back into here and because I've set it to center, I'm going to hit the first one here, hit that off on first waypoint and uh, let that go and start on the first land. But first, we're going to copy that temporary course across here because we're going to need it for the other two. So, press play. That should now run off and go and start working down on this first land. Um, you can see, i turn the course on where it's heading to, right down the end there, and going to go through the middle. So that's that all sorted. We're now going to jump into the next one and set the course up for that. So like I said before, we're going to use the same course. We've got the copy course option there. That's going to come up. Now, we're obviously not wanting to go to the same place that the other one is. We're wanting to go and start in this next land. So what we're going to do, 
is we're going to go and try and pick the correct point. Hopefully it's going to be that one. Um, in fact, I think it's going to be the other end. I'm trying to figure out which end these might have transitioned across from. I can't actually tell. I can't see a line. So we might just go take a little bit of a gamble that it's going to be there because these lands all seem to be working independently. So um, we'll head down that end and we'll go and make a start. So being a land setting, we want to start here on the red. The red signifies the start or the, end, uh, the beginning of a course. You can see the red arrow pointing to the left. The green is the end of it. Um, so we're just going to just try and turn this on, press the right, all the right buttons. There we go. I'm just going to drive forward a little bit because I need to try and get this lined up as near as I can on this line. This is the first of the land, I think. And then come in here and we're going to press nearest waypoint. And this should start this one off on this path and head down and this should then tackle this center land we're going to do the same with the third harvester bring it over and tackle the end one as well so we've driven down the end here i haven't copied the course across yet with that copy course turn on all the waypoints come in and find that first red one and once again all going to plan we'll get this turned on lowered down we're going to drive in here manually change it to nearest waypoint and press play and that should run along there and do this all on its own and as you can see it's telling me it's going to take an hour to finish this off uh, that's not correct because this is the third of the lands um, so it's actually only got these rows to do that's calculating how long it's going to take them to, to do six headland passes um, and everything else like that if we go back to the previous one it's probably going to say even longer than an hour 10 there you go an hour 40 and the first one telling me over two hours to harvest because it's basically started from the first waypoint not from uh, halfway through the field or half the field done so it does require a little bit more management a little bit more watching a little bit more observation but it is another good way to be able to run multiple tools in a field um, but if you wanted them to work separately uh, independently have less chance of having collisions or anything interfering um, then this is a way to do it and I quite like doing it this way um, there could be other reasons you want to as well, but it's just another way to think about how you can use course play and run the same course with multiple tools using the course rather than using the multiple tool setting in course play if you understand what I'm trying to say. So I think without any more rambling on, that has uh, been a summary of the multiple tool features for course play for Farming Simulator 25 and a couple of different ways to look at using that course this will apply like I said at the start you'll be able to use this with combines, plows, cultivators, seeders, sprayers, whatever you name you should be able to run this as a course. Any field work tool should be able to do this and use the multiple tool settings so I uh, don't just think it is an option here for harvesters um, but it is quite a common thing for them to be used for particularly something like this where you would actually see a fleet of harvesters harvesting beans, spinach, peas things like that um, in a field so there we go i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you found it useful and informative as always thank you all very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one